It's a Tuesday edition here on Zero Block 30, and today we have three rounds of the magazine. Round number one, the dogs at Chernobyl are turning into absolute freaks, the likes of which have never been seen. I, I actually kind of feel bad the way that I wrote that out. That's That was ugly. Fun Freaks can be a fun thing or a cool right, thing. Yeah. Like freak, are they yeah. turning into freak leaks or mm -hmm. freaks? By the way, somebody, whenever I was asking dog questions, which we're going to do in round number two, they ask me about you, and they ask me, this isn't about dogs, but is Kate going to go back down to the sausage factory for the 4th of July this year? <laughs> oh, said, to the sausage <laughs> castle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about hound dogs, that's for sure. My God. Mm -hmm. The answer is so no. So round number two, we're bringing back the old doggy bag. We, I went to the social media channels and asked <clears> folks <throat> if they have dog questions, and I'm going to answer some of those. And then finally, Katie's news roundup. Mm -hmm. Some stuff going on there. Let's hop straight into the story. We're going to talk a little. Oh, Cons, I don't know what Cons is doing, but Nick is back. He's we're out there somewhere. Yeah, Nick is back. back. We'll hear from him at the end of the show. We'll give you a little update on yeah. paternity leave life. So round number one, I think this is Chaps' new Pangea. If anyone recalls, <laughs> Chaps became obsessed with Pangea yeah. for several months. And I feel like oh, you yeah. still dip your toe in it from time to time. And not just Pangea, other supercontinents as well. Right. I didn't know there was others before Pangea. Oh, they've and been doing this a long time. Long right? time. Millions and millions. The years. Appalachians so used to be taller than the Mount Everest. Which That's is, exactly you know, right. Thanks to Pangea. Mm -hmm. It is an easy rabbit hole to go down. But but did I you also know that in that place on the top, even top of Everest, they can find sedimentary rock, which only occurs whenever there's been um, water there. There is snow up there. But not enough to make oysters. Oh, oysters, oysters up there. They're shucking them at yeah. the very top. I love well, that. Horseshoe crabs is the big one that's up there. Oh, my goodness. Well, all kinds of interesting. Well, your new thing, though, is Chernobyl, I think. Big time. I think you're hitting a big Chernobyl stride. Yeah, um, Chernobyl head. As we recall, April 1986, right before I was born, by the way, no big deal. Um, about 100 miles north of Kiev in the Ukraine, but at the time was the Soviet Union, Chernobyl nuclear power plant at blew up, essentially. It was the product of a flawed Soviet reactor design coupled with serious mistakes by the plant operators. It was a direct consequence of Cold War isolation and resulting lack of any safety culture. Basically, they were super isolated. They're like, we don't need anyone's help or any experts to help us. We know how to build a nuclear reactor. And also, we're going to do it with no OSHA, not a thing in the Soviet mm -hmm. Union. They just did not give a fuck. They were just putting pipes in and doodads everywhere. Okay? Yeah, doodads. Um, they described Chernobyl afterwards as it was a loaded gun cocked and ready to fire. Like, it was going to fucking melt down at some right. point. It was inevitable. And basically, a power surge destroyed the Chernobyl 4 reactor. Several large explosions triggered a fireball that blew the heavy steel and concrete lid off the reactor. And ultimately, 30 operators and firemen within three months were killed. Tons of deaths later. And I was reading, too, thousands of unattributed deaths and illnesses that the Soviet Union is like, no, 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 no. Not related. Not related in any way, but... Very. It's kind of like what the VA did, uh, like in the 70s and 80s, with suicide. They're like, oh, no, it wasn't suicide. It was alcoholism. Yeah, like, like all these other things. Yeah. But, yeah, lots of things. Um, I remember people, d desperately, they were taking their children. Like, children were getting really sick, and they were taking them all over the world to, like, try and heal Earth them. Effects. And people point to now, well, look how much the nature is thriving there now, blah, blah, blah. But microbiologists, all these scientists are like, actually, no, it's never going to be the same. It's still completely fucked. And right. But it is interesting what's going on there. What's going on there? So do you want me to do it or do we want to go through the article? I'll give yeah. it what I, my thoughts about okay. it. No, let's go through the article. Okay. First. Well, so for decades, scientists have studied animals living in or near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to see how these increased levels of radiation affect their health, growth, and evolution. Like, you know, four generations from now, is this wolf going to have an extra eyeball on its head? Right. Um, a new study analyzed the DNA of 302 feral dogs I don't living... like that they call them feral. That's ugly. And some of these dogs, mm -hmm. I was wa looking at pictures. I wouldn't care <clears throat> if I got nu nuclear poisoning or whatever it's called. These dogs deserve Pretty to be cute. hugged, too. Well, if you think about it, too, at the time when that happened, I think over 130,000 people within the radius were, like, overnight had to leave 
And if you couldn't find your dog or you couldn't whatever, like, so tons of pets, tons of pets got left behind. Mm -hmm. So now they were analyzing the DNA of 302 feral dogs living near the power plant compared to other animals living 10 miles away. And 10 miles still pretty close, but Mm -hmm. they're talking 302, like, right around the power plant. And they found remarkable differences. While the study doesn't prove that radiation is the cause of these differences, it's pretty nothing nothing else to point at. It's like, right, what, yeah. what else could it possibly yeah, yeah. be? Okay. And they got nuclear fur, so I think that's a pretty good indication. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so living among radiation-resistant fauna are thousands of feral dogs, many of whom are descendants of the pets left behind in the evacuation. Um, biologists are taking a closer look at them uh, in an area about the size of Yosemite National Park. The idea of radiation speeding up... Which is na- huge. That's a four-mile square area. So it's a pretty large area when you think about four, a four-mile cube. Yosemite National Park's only four miles? Like when all of it encased, they said it's about the same. Okay. Four, what I read, it was four, mi- four square miles. Okay. The really intense... Oh, oh okay. It goes out further, but the super intense spot is where you can't stay at. Well, they're saying this radiation exposure may have altered the animal's genomes and even possibly sped up evolution with them. Mm -hmm. And the idea of radiation speeding up natural evolution isn't new. The practice of purposefully irradiating seeds in outer space to induce advantageous mutations, for example, is a well-worn method for developing crops well-suited for a warming world. I didn't know they did that either. I didn't no. they, know they went to space and goofed around with nuclear stuff to make <laughs> plants different. Yeah. I had no idea. Do you know what they're talking about, that <clears throat> uh, frog, the difference in that frog? I Have think, you said the frog yet? No, I'm about to, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So I was like, no, not yet. Um, oh, scientists have been analyzing certain animals living within that zone for years, bacteria, rodents, birds, and one study found that eastern tree frogs, which are usually green, were black in that zone. Biologists theorize that the frogs experienced a beneficial mutation in melanin, pigments responsible for skin color, that helped ionize the surrounding radiation. Okay, that's what I want to talk about, that little frog. Yeah. There's a certain type of moth that took hundreds and hundreds of years to develop where it perfectly blended in with this tree in the forest that these moths kind of went into. That took hundreds and hundreds of years for it to happen, like all the way. This one, just in decades. So microevolution apparently is fast. To go from green to solid black in just 50 years of evolution is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And now they're wondering, is the same thing happening with all those wild dogs? Mm -hmm. We know which dogs are related to the other dogs. We know their heritage, says Elaine Ostrander, a geneticist. Um, The canine packs are not just a hodgepodge of wild feral dogs. They're actually families of dogs breeding, living, and existing in the power plant. In? In the power plant. Workers at the plant are advised to not touch the dogs as radioactive particles can exist on their fur. Imagine telling that to, like, a bunch of Lance Corporals that somehow post, <laughs> right. don't touch those puppies. You're like a fob dog still, like, oh, no, this one's fine. We checked yeah. it. It's good. Yeah. Um, the rules of man mean nothing to the world of dog. They lay, dig, roll around. They drink the puddles. They don't know Chernobyl happened. They're just having a good time in, in it this. Remind, it reminded me of my dogs, like, it, like working. They don't care about finding bombs. Like, they're not scared of that because they have no idea what's going on. They don't on. know, they yeah. They're looking for a toy. They're having a good time. The group, there's a group there um, trying to care for these dogs a little bit, and they're making some of Chernobyl's dogs available for adoption after a strict vetting and decontamination process, of course. Would kill to have a nuclear dog. Great, great icebreaker. Oh, yeah. Great talking okay, point at a party. 23-year-old Kate, a nu- somebody who owns a nuclear dog comes in. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Um, the new study uncovered that the feral dogs living near the Chernobyl plant showed distinct genetic differences from dogs only miles away. Um, it, inbreeding, though, they also said might be a tricky yeah, thing. That could be part be, of it. I'm, and that's basically the story of what's going on. And I want to... It's not just dogs, though. Like, these documentaries and the articles that I was reading about it, there's horses that are completely changing from any other type of horse in the world. All of them are changing. The fish, the birds, all that kind of stuff. And now there's so many that are flourishing there, like even other uh, environments, like the trees are growing back, natural ponds are showing up. There's all types of nature is healing itself through nuclear stuff. 
But because there's so many things now, at first it was just these puppies that didn't roam a long way, and it was like moths and frogs. But now as it goes up, these animals are going further and further out from that zone, and they could be breeding with the other dogs that are normal uh, stray dogs or whatever. And then the nuclear component of that dog transfers into the other dog. And so now you have a bunch of nuclear babies. And it reminded me of The Last of Us, honestly. Like, yeah. if you have a nuclear thing that's going on, because if, if it's in their fur, like they said that if you go into their undercoat and you have it on your hands, that you could get cancer from just touching these dogs. It's crazy. Yeah, I... I mean, there too, I was reading, there's like thousands of workers that, because they covered it with this big giant dome right, over right. the last several years. I'm like, there's a lot of workers there that I bet when no one's looking, it's pretty hard not to pet these pups. Yeah. Um, but and that's really interesting. That dome that Kate's mm -hmm. talking about, it's super thick. So in case anything happens, so it can keep the nuclear portions inside, the nuclear radioactivity is so strong that they think that it will eat through that super strong dome in 75 to 100 years. Yeah. It, it's and kind of just putting a cap on it for now. essentially forever. But yeah. Here it's not. Yeah, interested to see how, I mean, I, it's a jackpot for scientists who don't live in that area to come through and be like, look at all this weird shit happening. Let's see how this, because how else and are you going to study that? And evolution up close is cool too. Yeah, it's really cool. A scientist's dream, I'm sure. I would tour it. I would wear a little oh. spaceman suit. Remember after that, I think it wasn't it called Chernobyl on HBO. Yeah, that was. A, I feel like tourism shot up after that. People wanted to yeah. go. Anthony Bourdain had an episode there. Like, oh, yeah, interesting. Did they have to wear suits and stuff? Not everywhere, but you just couldn't like touch anything. They're like, you can walk around without your, but like, do not touch fucking anything. Was Would the you vibe? Want to touch stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd want Come to on. Touch stuff too. Yeah. I'd be touching things. Give me yeah. some gloves and let me touch it. All right, let's move on to round number two. We're done with Chernobyl dogs. So round number two, we're going to do a little bit of doggy bag. We haven't done that in a while. And if you're listening and you're new, I was a dog handler in the Marine Corps for a while. And I taught, I was an instructor, chief instructor, whatever, at the military working dog school at Lackland Air Force Base. I've trained hundreds of dogs or been around the training and trained in the handlers to train these dogs. So my dog experience and knowledge is pretty vast. So a lot of times people will ask me questions. They'll be like, hey, my dog is doing this. Can you answer? And I don't want to answer the same questions a million times because that is what I end up doing. So sometimes I'll have these doggy bag sections and I'll just say, hey, go listen to the doggy bag version of S uh, ZBT and you'll probably find your answer mm -hmm. there. So I asked uh, Saturday if anybody had any questions and some people did. Kate, what are some of those? Yeah, the first one, um, I remember my cat growing up loved everyone, but we had one neighbor that my cat like <laughs> would like, he never did that to anyone, but it was just one specific neighbor who was a lovely guy this guy has the same problem. He said, my eight-year-old dog hates my brother-in-law, loves everyone else. Can it be fixed? What do you think the issue is, Kate? Let's do this. <clears throat> Just natural, what do you think? Maybe the brother-in-law, like, has, is, like, a hulking person or is, like, way bigger than everyone else. Or maybe he has, like, a big scraggly beard. Or maybe, like, I don't know. Is it something physical? Is Or is the brother-in-law, like, afraid of dogs so just has a weird energy around the dog? Or is the dog right and the dog has a great sense and knows that brother-in-law is a real piece of shit? Your last two are absolutely correct. Mm. Dogs have an intuition of people that they don't want to be around because they can tell certain things. If there's only one person that the dog doesn't like, it is a red flag big time. But big I've time. been that person t sometimes when oh. dogs have like seem to like everyone but they don't like me it's like that i think you should leave sketch where the baby only cries in the one guy's arm used to be a piece and he's shit. like i swear i'm not a piece of shit i don't know why this is happening like yeah i don't know and if it's not that it's the other one um what did you say again what was the other one you said physical something physical about him that's oh, yeah. different physical. than a, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh you got it right that's a good job kate how can you fix that i would say just having them bring treats and be extra nice to the dog. Like, I don't know. Exposure therapy is yeah. the, really the way to do that. So if you and bring them around, don't bring them super close and then get closer every time he's around. And eventually the dog will get over it because they typically do with exposure therapy. They can get used to anything, gunshots, fire, whatever. 
um, exposure therapy really helps. So that's what I would do. Yeah. Next. Next. Okay. Um, dog question. How do we feel about e-collars, electric shock collars? To me, it depends on the breed of the dog. Oh, shit. I was going to let you answer. Okay, you go. Okay. Um, to me, it depends on the breed of the dog, chaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It totally depends. Now, I my initial knee jerk of someone who hasn't had a dog is I don't love it. Um, I know people get them for when their dog barks too much or the electric fence kind of thing. Ultimately, if it's to keep your dog safe, but you're shocking them because you don't want to have a fence making your yard look ugly, it's like, just put up the fence, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like ultimately they like can probably overcome that eventually, right? Like they get sens desensitized to it, maybe? Uh, the titration level, uh, that's paint for dogs. I don't know if that's the same thing for human, but the titration do of dogs, the ability to withstand pain increases with time, like, or exposure to that too yeah get more and more used to it kind of like body hardening or w when you're doing mma but these i hate e-collars i yeah, think I don't... they're fine for people like me or people that are super trained on it i hate it the way that most quote civilians use it where they just they are having problems with basic obedience and you end up having it on like a boxer or a super small dog a medium-sized dog and there's absolutely no reason to do that the only time that's really useful in my opinion is whenever you're doing aggression training where the dog is going to bite and you want him to stop immediately so you get him the only thing that's going to really stop the dog from there because if you release the dog and he's halfway through the bite there's nothing that you can do to stop him if you mm -hmm. don't have something on remote except for your voice and rapport so if you don't have the ability to do that you have to smash that button real quick and then pair it with a sharp no and this is where people make the biggest mistakes this is probably the best advice that i'll give you um, as far as teaching your dog off leash obedience so if you have a little choke chain and not like the pinch collar if you have a little choke chain and you pull it whenever he's doing something bad like in a choke chain you're supposed to pull it real fast if you do that and pair it at the same exact time with a sharp no eventually pavlov's, the pavlov's theory comes into effect and the dog will associate your strong no with the correction that he already had mm -hmm. so that's kind of how you do that eventually you wean yeah. the dog off of the shot collar without the knee of the shot collar um next tips on how to work with a dog that has separation anxiety having lots of difficulty with this um i don't know what you would do i, I feel like a lot of people who got dogs during the pandemic and kept them a lot of people returning them now um, but people who had dogs during the pandemic and so all the dog knew for two years was that their owner was home with them every day and now they're go their owners are going back to work and they're like whoa yeah. whoa 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 what the fuck's happening i bet that's a huge yeah. huge problem i have no idea what to do on this one i don't know the causes you're exactly right one the causes are that you are just not around nearly enough and two yeah. you punish when you come back and you have a dog with separation anxiety you come in you see that the dog has pissed and shit all in his kennel if you're doing kennel craning or you leave him in the house and all of a sudden all your toilet paper your couches and all that stuff so you come in and yell at the dog one, the dog has no idea what you're yelling at him for most of the time. They just, they, and people are like, yes, they do. They go to the corner to feel bad. If you said the same exact thing to them and you said it in a calm voice, they would have no idea. It's yeah. all in your demeanor of how they're acting there. They're scared because of the demeanor. So what I would do is you play a game. You make it a game just like you do bomb dog handling. So you put the dog in the kennel for two minutes and you go outside your door, shut it and the dog's like hanging out and he's okay then you come in before the dog starts whining and all that and you come in the door you're like Woohoo, good job mama and you make it like this biggest thing ever and then you make it five minutes and then you make it seven minutes and then you make it ten minutes it's called successive approximation whenever you do that you do baby steps along the way and that's a cure to a lot of the problems that people have they expect yeah. it to go from one to the other and it's not that way it's like raising a child where you make them better along the way yeah something to work on from the very beginning mm -hmm. um i like this one can i shave my german shepherd in the summer this one pisses me off when people do it do because people do this i've never seen a shaved german shepherd in my life they will 
Like they, because the line cut, you've never seen a German Shepherd that somebody would oh, shave where they yeah, look yeah, like yeah. a lineman or, or a lion. They do that simply for the aesthetic. Like okay. This person that went out, like, does it make them cooler? In fact, it does the opposite. It makes them hotter because the dog's fur is designed. That's the way they have evolved to keep them cool. In it's like shade. They are. Yeah. yeah, it's like shade to them. So when you shave them, one, they have, they get sunburns. Two, they have terrible skin conditions whenever that happens because the oil and the fur is what keeps yeah. their, that's like their own conditioner. And then three, you develop these problems because when the, the undercoat grows back, it grows back thicker and the dog's normal hair has trouble laying down so the dog's hair will be up. And it doesn't matter just about the aesthetics. It matters about how much germs and how much infection and how much yeah. dry skin and uh, sclerosis. What's that fucking them word? Scoliosis. Scoliosis. Their little spines crinkle up too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. What's the one when you have like red spots on your elbow? Psoriasis. Psoriasis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll get that. A dog version of psoriasis. Yeah. Leave them. Le- leave them be. I had a friend who had a Burmese mountain dog in D.C. And um, you do have to be more careful in the summer to keep them cool, but they never shaved the dog or anything like that. They were like, this is, yeah. Um, There you go. And then last question, with PCSing TDY and work, is it wrong of me to get a dog if I'm working 70 to 80 hours a week? Firm yes. Yeah. If you you have a partner who's willing to go, like, to help you in the off time, but, yeah, that's, you're away from the dog too much. It's kind of. You lose all relationship with your dog. Yeah, it's kind of cruel. Um. Yeah, I would say no to that. And then best way to get my husky to go up and down the stairs. He refuses to as of now, two years old. Yeah, so the same thing, baby steps. Go on the first step and just you just pet him hanging out on the first step and then have like a treat on the second step and, and just hold it out and be very, very patient. This dog doesn't get this. You don't get the reward until you do this. And then you move to the next step and the next step. Eventually the dog will be over it. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience, that's for Baby sure. Baby steps is the biggest dog training thing that you can do. Yeah. Baby steps. Hmm. All right, that's a little dog training. A little let's doggy into, bag. Yeah, let's move News into roundup. Save round. news, oh, news, yeah, the news, news roundup. Oh, yeah, the news roundup. I love yep. the news roundup. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Proper Wild. If you suffer from symptoms of ADHD like I do, which include a lack of focus, no productivity, your brain is constantly wondering, that no pro- productivity thing is killing me. I look at my stuff and I'm like, oh, God, I got so much stuff to do. Then I hit a little proper wild and I start feeling proper raw wild, my friends, because proper wild uses organic caffeine stacked with L-theanine, which is clinically proven to boost your energy, focus, productivity without those jitters or the crash. No preservatives, no artificial flavors or sweeteners, no horrible chemicals, just the natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that work. I told you I love it. I've been loving it. I'll continue to love it. The strawberries, my favorite. The kiwi, I love that stuff. Oh, by the way, kiwi, a drastically underused flavor, and they do it exactly right. Go to properwild.com slash barstool to try it out. Again, that's properwild.com slash barstool to try thir- to get 30% off Proper Wild, which is a great damn deal. Yeah, so first up, let's hear one for the ladies out here. Um, Russian blogger I, goes I bust. I wish you said give him one. Kill. Yeah, give him one. Um, an explosion. Did you see the video of the explosion in St. Petersburg this weekend? I did. Little cafe. It could have been in France. Could have been a cute little quaint cafe with a like, big green awning over it. It was from a traffic camera. There's cars going by when all of a sudden there's this whoosh, like a big flash and the awning kind of crumples, but clearly a bomb went off inside, not enough to blow up the building, but to blow up the room. Um, so an explosion tore through a cafe in Russia's second largest city Sunday, killing a well-known military blogger and strident supporter of Putin's war against Ukraine. This guy was, um, Well, I'll get into it. Officials announced the arrest of a Russian woman on Monday in connection with the blast. You go, girl. Claiming she carried a bust of the blogger that was rigged as a bomb. So she brought in a statue of the chest and head of a blogger that she wanted to kill, and it was a bomb. Remember when Masood was killed in Afghanistan, they hit a a bomb in a camera and pretended they were going to interview him and blew it up, blew it up. Um, anyway, just really that's interesting ways. Crazy. I mean, yeah. that's a good. But why would you be having a bust? 
Wouldn't you put the bust in like a backpack or something? Well, no. So she she pretended to be a fan. You can see there's videos and pictures of before it happened. He's talking uh, in front of this cafe. I have a picture of him here, chaps. And he's got his own photo behind him with like guns behind him. And he was one of the biggest propagandists of Russia's war in Ukraine. Uh, in remarks on the video, the woman who says, my name's Nastya. Um, she asked him a couple questions. They're laughing. They're kind of goofing. They're hitting it off. Um, and she's like, I made a bust of you. Like, I'm, I'm like a sculptor. I made this bust of you. Can I show you? And the guards had asked her to leave it at the door in case it was, who knows. Uh, right. But everyone had to leave all their shit at the door. But he was so intrigued. They were joking and laughing. He was like, sure, bring the bust over here. Let's see it. So she runs to the door. She presents it to him. Everybody's like, oh, that's neat. Um, and then she goes back to her seat and then slips out the door. She leaves. Boom. Bomb goes off. She takes him out. That is incredible. Like yeah. Michael Flynn's books, when I was, I used to read those things. That's the kind of thing you read there and you're like, whoa. But yeah. I don't know if it, that happened in real life. I would have never believed that happened in real life. Yeah, and 23-year-old St. Petersburg woman Daria Tripova has been arrested on suspicion of involvement with the bombing. But I've never heard of somebody blowing somebody up with a bust of themselves. So his own, his own, uh... Ego, it looks like, maybe got him in the end there. Um, Finland joins NATO today. That's it. Good Congrats. News. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Come aboard. Which extends, I think the big news there is it essentially doubles uh, the amount of NATO territory that's on the Russian border. Yes. So uh, uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the Ukraine conflict, Russia's illegal trip into Ukraine or war with Ukraine, Russia's reasoning one of them was NATO's influence on countries that weren't in NATO, but they were NATO adjacent. Yeah. And so they didn't want the expansion of NATO. And now that he did this, they're like, we need to extend NATO to yeah. Finland. So, yeah, that, and I'm sure more will follow. Uh, rough vacation for this man's family. A U.S. citizen who moved his family to Syria to join ISIS has been sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Emran Ali, 55 years old, a U.S. citizen born in Trinidad and Tobago, was sentenced Tuesday in Miami. He pled guilty to conspiring to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. According to court records, he moved his family from Trinidad and Tobago to Brazil and Turkey and then to Syria. But why did they go along with it? He told his kids, he brought his whole family, his children, we're going on vacation. And ended up taking them to Syria to join ISIS, which was apparently Worst vacation of all time. just a nightmare. It's like your parents ever tell you you're going to Disney, you go to the dentist. At least they didn't take you to ISIS, you know, yeah. so it could I be mean, worse. I, everybody wants to go to Disney World, but I'd even, instead of going to see ISIS, I'd have gone to that place in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah, you could do that instead of joining ISIS, you go to prison. So don't do that. Right. Anyway, um, finally... Donald J. Trump, he's the first American president to be charged with a crime. He's expected to arrive in Manhattan today as he prepares to turn himself into authorities on Tuesday. Um, police presence here is going to be over the top. There, there's going to be wackadoos from both sides. Both sides. Of the, the top craziest wackadoos from every side of the fence, I believe, will converge in Manhattan and do all kinds of wackadoo things outside the attorney's office. Anyway, the Manhattan attorney's office, which brought the charges is focused on the former president's involvement in the payment of hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels, who said she had an affair with him. Michael D. Cohen, Trump's fixer at the time, made the payment during the final days of the 2016 campaign. And while the facts are dramatic and the indictment's explosive, the case against Trump could hinge on an untested legal theory. Uh, conviction is far from assured. And it's kind of just a crazy dog and pony show. I'll be honest. I think we need to hold more of our top leaders accountable for shit on both sides of the fence across the board. But I'm just so tired. I would tired. run an investigation like a serious federal in get investigation for Biden administration, how they fucked up the Afghanistan withdrawal. People yeah. do need to be held accountable. They but do. But this is a really explosive thing for sure. It's an explosive thing, but I'm just so, like, over. I just... Right. I just can't bring myself to give a fuck. I just, people who are like, so yeah, they finally that. got a blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, man, I'm just over it. I just like do not care. I'm just over this mess. Anyway. And I know a lot of people are going to pay attention online to it. I think I might not. I think I might just stay I just off. don't care. 
And maybe I'll look at a couple articles the day after, or two days after, just to see what happened. But watching it unfold, no, you know exactly what it's going to look like. People are going to have their Trump flags, and they're going to there's going to be people that are like lock him up and all that shit. I have yeah. no interest in it. No interest in it. I feel like you're if you go too far either way, you're just annoying, quite frankly. But yeah. um, <laughs> thirty four counts it. is big because it's not just the Stormy Daniels. Right. Thing. There are thirty four different counts. I do love that the first American president to be charged with a crime, that it is about a porn star. I feel like you can't you can't find anything more American than that, truly. Yeah, you would have thought it'd be JFK, right? Right. You would have thought, but didn't have the time. That'd be a tricky question on Jeopardy. This president was the first president to be charged with a crime over the use of a prostitute. I would have said no, Clinton. Porn star, not prostitute. Yeah, we don't say a lot of them. Either. Sex worker. Shout out yeah. to all the sex workers out there. Salute. Go watch... Uh, only stance with Clint Boss. He has a lot of adult filmmakers. He there. does. He certainly does. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. And like we said, we're glad to have our guy Nick. So let's mm-hmm. do a little catch up, Nick. What do we got? Yeah, back from paternity leave. That's right, paternity leave. So you got another baby, another baby in the good household. So we got a baby boy. So he's been Yay. keeping us busy. I've been doing a lot of um, cute as a button too. So cute. Seems like such a good natured dude. Yeah, uh, he he's good. I mean, he's a uh, he's bigger than his sister was at this time, so he's pretty. He's a, he's an easier baby. I'll say that. I don't want to jinx things, but um, you know, he poops. He he gives you the signals of what he needs and what he wants, and I and all I have to do is execute. And uh, right. you know, yeah. being on a military podcast, you know, I, I I'm experienced in that now. I I understand you know how to complete a mission. Yeah, oh. Nick was also talking about how he has the ability to operate on four hours sleep. Very military, right there. Very too. military, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even like sleep. I think I, I feel like I'm bored. <laughs> I feel like I'm when I'm sleeping, I'm bored. I'd rather be doing sleep something. Oh, we could not be more opposite. Yeah, now. no, I, you oh, give me, you, you give me four hours, I'll give you an entire day. Um, but I do relish in the fact that eventually, when we get him sleep trained. You know, I'll be able to get like seven hours, and I can't imagine what even that feels like at this point. But uh, you know, this is this is the gig. This is what you sign up for. This is why yeah. and you procreate. When you've been doing that for so long. Even if you wanted to sleep in, you can't like, yeah. because your brain becomes so ingrained of getting up at that certain time. I'm still up at six thirty every day, no matter what day it is. If I'm not yeah. up before six thirty, I feel like excuse my friend i feel like an absolute just like waste like i feel like i've just like have totally just botched the day and i need to and i just i don't know i it, it's just ingrained in my head now that i gotta be up before that time so um but that's just me that's not for everyone certainly not for my wife she loves her sleep <laughs> and i think she married me because she knows that i will get up early for the rest of of our lives together. Yeah, you're making a lot of guys look bad out there. Which, I'm, that's, uh, I, I, you know I love doing it. I you would know, give you, a lot for an awake guy. If you like, follow me. Boy, if, oh boy. Yeah. Man, oh man. Oh, man. Guy. Those awake guys out there. Gotta, yeah. What's but that yeah, like? I uh, I have no problem with you know making sure that people know that I'm up early. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm waking up and I'm letting everyone know. Uh, whether that makes you feel bad or not, I don't know. I don't care, but it's just, it's just my Well, welcome time. back. Thank you. Happy to be yeah. back. I'm happy to edit the shit out of this, at this show. Very excited. I'm ready for that, too. Big time ready. Kate, what about you? Oh, if you have nothing for the third week in dude, a row. I, I was talking about this on the Yak. I need to get a life again. <laughs> I love being a mom more than anything on the planet. But when you have a job that relies on life experiences to have shit to talk about, and all you do is parent, and you don't go do anything else, like you oh. run, like you run out of shit to talk about. Speaking and, of language, and it gets a little difficult to. Uh, so I need to come up with like a hobby or something, and I need to get over. I'm still too paranoid for a babysitter, and I need to figure out like someone I trust in the name. Like I need to figure that shit out because I have no life experiences outside of parenting for the last two years. So other, otherwise, I would have something to talk about. The only big news I have is I can't poop yeah. right now. I'm mm-hmm. all stopped up. That's my news. Oh. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Oh, oh wait. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Dumbest thing to do when you can't poop. I cooked last night for, like, the first time ever. I'm going to start making three casseroles a week, I decided, because I don't know how to cook. So I'm going to 
<laughs> Starts well. Casserole. Have you got yourself a crock pot yet? I do, but I always screw it up. That crock pot stuff never turns out the way I want it to. I know. You say it's crazy, but I, I always screw it up. <clears throat> Guess what I made? What? A wild move for a person who's having trouble taking a dump right now to make. The, just look at me right now and know I'm loaded to oh, the brim with it. Some kind of cheese? Sloppy Joe casserole, dude. I mean, what? I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. That's an oh, elevated yeah. Sloppy Joe. Yeah, it's real gross. So I'm waiting for that to hit the fan. Chaps, how about you? Well, I got a couple things because Khan's not here. I had a good weekend this weekend. I've been doing uh, reading. I'm back into reading. This oh. happens every couple years. Yeah. Uh, I'll read, and then I'll read like five or six <clears throat> books in one month, and then I, I'm done with it for a while. Yeah. But I've been reading books, and I think I figured out why I don't like most of the books that I read. I usually read thrillers that are involved with, like, guns, and we're going to go be an assassin and all that kind of shit. I've switched. I'm not doing that anymore. I have gone. I only go right now to the women's section on Amazon Kindle. And let me just tell you, these books are a fucking delight. Like the Mm -hmm. different conversation that they're having inside people's brain. What's going on with her? How does she feel? Uh, This guy's being an asshole to me. I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, Catherine, some of these writers are straight up perverts. Perverts. Like uh, We're horny over there. We're getting yeah. finger blasted left and right, Chaps. That's exactly right, Kate. Finger yep. blasting was a big part of this book. Mm-hmm. One, I forgot how much finger blasting was a thing. Like, uh, you get older, you're not you're not doing much finger you're blasting. You're not doing it as much anymore. Yeah. I mean, I'm down to, but my wife's not. The opportunity <laughs> so doesn't arise as often. Maybe she will be. But we have this. So she's going, the writer is going into all these details about her sex life and this new love interest that she has. Let me tell you some of the phrases that she uses, Kate. So when he walks, they walk into the bar. They both work at the bar together. And he's the owner of the bar. And she's, like, running the bar. So they go into his office. And they start fooling around because they have this new love interest. And she's like, he pulled off my shirt and was caressing my nipples like he was pinching them and going to snap. And I was like, that's a that's an aggressive nipple move. And then... She well, and he was, says, like, yanking him like a snap and a suspender on somebody. Yeah, like, I thought like, it was like, I don't like that. That's what I was thinking when she was doing it. And the next thing, she pulled down his pants and said, I slid his meat wand inside of me. Meat wand. Yeah, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear it called a meat wand. No. And this one. This one, the next one, she's talking about her old vagina. She's talking Mm. about her vagina. And she said, we went to breakfast and then came back to my house. And inside my underwear felt like a biscuit covered in honey. Ew. (laughs) Like, Jesus Yeah, no, I don't like that. I don't like like that. How does that make people horny? A biscuit covered with honey? That's a mess, pal. That's, That's a mess. A big mess. Yeah. You never get so that off your sheets. a big-time women's reader. I love Great. those books. Happy for you. <laughs> the two that I've picked, one was about that that I told you about, and now I'm following the lovely story of a 14-year-old girl. going. She's it's, set, it's a historical novel set in the late 1700s, right before the Revolutionary War, and she lives right outside of Boston. <clears throat> and she doesn't want any love interest. She wants to be in the Army, too, and she wants to do her part and everybody's saying that she's going to go and find somebody. She's it's like, like America's Mulan. Right. Exactly right. Mm. And if she ends up being married to somebody or some love interest, I'm going to be upset. We need yeah. to have more heroines that are just heroines that aren't just heroines that are involved with their guys. Mm-hmm. Amen. I'll tell you mm-hmm. what. I'm glad <laughs> you're reading thing. again. Next thing. How old do you think flamingos can live? Um... We go to my son, the zoo I go to with my son. They're always there. They're like, like 14? 83. There's a, oh, there's shit. a flamingo that is 83 years old. I would have never thought that ever in a wow. million years. No, I never. Well, parrots live to be old as hell. I guess colorful birds maybe, something about it. Maybe. So I mm. Googled what the longest living 
animals are. Did Turtle. You know there's something, something called a Greenland shark. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. And they're old as hell. They'll live to like 500. Yeah. They're like big old cold rockets that just kind of go around the bottom of the sea. Like most of the other longest living animals aren't like vertebrates. It's the longest living vertebrate that there is. But listen to this. This is the part that blew my mind. And I think this should be against science and against nature. Mm. There's something called the immortal jellyfish. And this jellyfish is the planet's only known immortal species. Once it reproduces, it reverses back to the polyp stage, so right when it's a baby, and lives its life over again. So it's essentially Whoa. jellyfish groundhog day. I mean, seems like not a good time, eventually. No, especially when you're, those things are like miles into the sea. There's not, you know, you live 500 years on Earth, at least you get to see time passing. You're a Greenland mm-hmm. shark down there, a jellyfish, really nothing mm-hmm. doing that entire time. I don't know. I mean, Hmm. what if you had a bad day? But if you had a bad day, you're like, you know what? Let's just start this shit over again. (laughs) I'm just going to start over and do my whole thing over again. Next one. Shout out to our friend Terminal uh, Lance, Max Uriarte. He got uh, from the Commandant of the Marine Corps, said that he was the Lance Corporal of the Marine Corps. Ah. A little thing around his neck, like with a Lance Corporal. Uh, medallion on there. So yeah. shout out to him. That's pretty cool, right? That is Lance pretty Corporal cool. Of the Marine Corps. Yep. Because he's been doing Terminal Lance for like 15 years, maybe at this point. And he really so. does capture the essence of Marines so perfectly. So congrats. And the fact that he's been out for so long and can still do it is pretty yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah, no problem the- over here. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> and the last one, this one's troubling. Might be because of my brain stuff. I'm forgetting how to spell. Like, I just. I'm forgetting how to spell all of... I tried to write column this morning. I had to Google it. You know what I blame that on? We do everything on the computers, and the computer usually corrects it for you, and so you just don't have to think anymore. Like, when's right. the last time you really, truly wrote shit out? It, like, doesn't happen anymore. So I you're don't. fine. It's just our brains melting due to technology. It really is. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. I was blown away by the flamingo, and I hope that the revolutionary uh, girl does a great job. So oh, great. It's on the retreat. 